and welcome to Dommy Tries This. I hope you brought your cuppa. Today's coffee mug, I found at a Walmart. Now, I don't like shopping much at Walmart. Hi. I mentioned later that she is just all into the things. Say hello. Say hello. She's not going to look at you. You can look at them. Would you look at them? <laughs> she's like a little punk. Okay, go on now. Yeah, she's 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 being a wild child. <laughs> I don't know what's up with today, but she's being a wild child. Anyway, as I was saying, I don't like much shopping at Walmart, um, the Walton family, and all that. No, don't like anyway. But sometimes we do, especially like, uh, that's where I get my medications refilled at. So we were getting our medications refilled and, um, even though we celebrate Christmas for family and not for quote unquote, the reason for the season, uh, I had to go and, um, pick out a coffee mug. So <laughs> this I found at Walmart. I really like it with the different colored candy canes on it. It is really cute. It came with some hot chocolate that I might have later. And speaking of chocolate, our tea in our candy cane mug is the Happy Luggies Loose Leaf Chocolate Tea. Uh, I want to do this. So you can see it's a chunky tea. It's all silver, folks. And uh, this has uh, cacao shell chocolate tea. That's all it says. That's all it says in there it just started seeping i will say it did definitely smell very chocolatey because it only has cacao shells so let's give her a sip and we will get started it's still getting the chocolate it's almost like a brownie mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's like a brownie Okay, I'm liking that. I'm not usually a hugely chocolate fan, but right now the flavor is perfect. It's going to get stronger as we go along because we have this impromptu filming and I'm just going to go ahead and use it and finish off the chapter that I uh, did a reading for and I could not get to the second chapter for that night. So we're going to do the second chapter in this look. And in this look, we are trying out the new... Cosmic Brushes Winter Wonderland. It has been dug into. You will see it undug into. Um, this is so me and this is so pretty. And I think I've mentioned before that the Cosmic Brushes brand with the first two palettes that I purchased from them just immediately shopped up into my, uh, shot up into my top five um, palettes. And right now the only other one up, up there that I can think of off the top of my head, unfortunately, is Nomad, because you all know I love Nomad. So this is like second, and uh, part of the reason we will discuss that at the end of this video, but um, it's beautiful. In addition to that, I actually did a purchase at Moira. I did pick up the glitter in pink. I'm not using it today, but I also picked up a couple of other things that we will talk about when we're making this look. So if you are interested in this palette, in this look, and want to get my opinion on these items, just keep on watching. Alrighty, so two notes before we get started. Uh, first, um, normally when I'm filming, I spray everything down behind me before, the night before, and it results in no problems or few, very few problems. Uh, what I'm actually filming, this is an impromptu filming, so we might end up with issues behind me. If we do, I apologize. I'm gonna be picking up some of that food grade earth stuff, and we're gonna hope that that's gonna help. It's been a real, real issue. And a lot of that is just me having my physical issues that are making it hard for me to do anything, and just living in an apartment. Y'all know living in an apartment sucks. And some of them are suckier than others, and we are in a suckier than other kind of apartment. Okay, so with that out of the way, I also need to warn you, or I need to warn you, that um, Siren is in a mood. <laughs> she has been in a mood all afternoon. She'd been racing around, thundering across the apartment like a little elephant or a little horse or something. Scratching at the glasses, getting into things, chirping, 
flipping things. She has been in a mood. It, she's fine. She's just siren. And apparently we can expect this for most of her life, if not all of it, because she might be Savannah and almost all of her character traits seem to fall in line with the Savannah. And they don't slow down as they get older. So I have never had a cat where I've had to consider childproofing my home before. I do now. So moving right along with all of that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get into this beautiful palette. But I also wanted to note, I probably did not mention it at the beginning, uh, the way I do these things. I don't know what I'm being, my, going to say at the beginning anyway. Uh, I did want to mention that I also have a couple of other items that we will be trying out. Uh, I did do a Moira, uh, purchase a few more things of Moira. I did get some of that, uh, some more of the glitter in the pink, but that's not going to fit for the look that I'm thinking of mine because, yes, indeed, I have a general idea of where I want to go. But I am going to try their ombre blush. This thing is gorgeous. I almost don't want to use it because it's so pretty. I've already done... Um, Done a slight rub to uh, uh, swatch it, and it is quite pigmented. Even the light stuff is pigmented. I also have funny story about this. Uh, I, as you guys recall, I think I was talking about, I had the Tokyo palette, and I couldn't find it. So I thought maybe somewhere along the way I had decluttered it. So I reordered it. I still had it. Siren. I hear things clinking. Anyway, but I did use that as an opportunity to get some of the Nomad um, Fetes Fete de Provence uh, lip glosses. So we'll be trying one of those. I managed to find a deeper shade of the Moira Signature lipsticks that I'm going to try. And also, I'm going to, that is not in their extended range, by the way. That's not amongst the new ones. I'm also going to try their um, mascara. Volume and Long Lash Mascara. This is supposed to have um, some really nice stuff in it. So, I'm going to give this a try, too. After this, I apparently need to chase the cat out of something that she's into now. So I'm going to start with this light purple matte blanket and I'm going to put that underneath the brow. We're going to try to do what we normally do or what we've started doing better. Probably should do this snowfall, but anyway. I'm going to put this under the brow. That's nice and light. Snowfall would have been too light, I think, for what I'm doing today. I want this. Hey! She decided to claw my rear end. She's being a little bugger. Anyway. So. We are going to have more shimmers than usual in this one. I'm hoping... Stop. <laughs> I'm hoping that I can get some of them with the brush, but we'll see. There. I think at least one of the shimmers I'm planning on using is a duochrome. All right. She is just determined to play with the, the seat, I guess. She'd be in a punk. She'd be in a punk. All right. So now I'm going to take a little bit of this color Wonderland. And I'm going to put it in here and go right along the brow. I don't want to go down into the crease. I just want a little bit of that sheen. Just to if it'll come up. <laughs> yeah, it's coming up. It's just a little bit. The whole thing is light. 
That's okay, we're gonna get into the fun colors in just a minute. this is gonna go folks she just lost something that she was rolling around on the floor I couldn't see it because I wasn't wearing my glasses but she has now lost it under the stove so if it was something of mine I have no idea what it was I don't think I have much that rolls but you know cats anyway all right so we're gonna take our usual here get this a little damp And I'm going to start with this color Frost. Put that on the inner corner. Uh-oh, now she's off somewhere else to cause trouble. You have to be careful with these. They tend to be soft. And digging in, you can end up with like a smooched hole. So I'm very gently tapping in with my thing and making sure I have some on there and we are going to do frost on the inner corner oh she's so pretty this palette you guys is really so me all right so we're taking that in about one third typical for one of my looks right to get the point so pretty so pretty okay and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get the other end wet another reason why I like these get the thing not my table. <laughs> and we're going to use this color Winter Solstice. Which looks like it's a pink-blue shift. Which is interesting. Or a pink gold. I don't know if it's duo or multi. Because I'm seeing a slight green cast now and then. It's a very pretty color. Now, I know the lighting is going to affect how this looks to you guys. So it may come across as, oh, she could have used the pink anyway. <laughs> but I don't want to. I want to just use this. So we're going to put this across the middle of our eye. I'm seeing blue and pink. And again, we're just going to go about two-thirds across. It looks really blue when I'm looking in my... my camera. Oh, you can see that shift when I turn my head. So it looks almost the same color as the frost, but there really is at least some pink. Looks like a little bit of gold and possibly some green in there. That's beautiful. I am actually going to try to use a firm brush. And get it damp. Give me a minute. Find that firm brush. Ah. Have a couple of them here. Hopefully one of them will be firm enough. <laughs> Gonna get that damp. Yeah, it would help if you actually hit the brush, Tommy. And we're gonna try to pick up some of this color reflection. We're gonna see what happens. No computer, that's not what's gonna happen. 
I mean, if it comes right down to it, I can go back and use one of the other sides of the um, sponge tip. But this is a beautiful color. Beautiful. Okay. And we're going to put that on this outer corner. All right. So we did get some of it up. But I think to get the full, the full um, impact of the color, I'm going to have to go ahead and use the other side of one of these. And I'm going to go ahead and use the, the frosted side, frost side, so that um, it's a little easier to tell apart because we do get a little green, like I said, in that, that duo or multi-chrome. So we're going to grab some of that with this. That's going to make the next part I want to do a little harder, but let's, let's just get there. There she is. That's pretty. It's still pretty light, at least from what I'm seeing. but it's darker than it was with the brush. And as you can see, you can kind of build it up. Go from a blue to that, that multicolor to that green. It's gorgeous. That's gorgeous. All right. So finding out that I can't really pick them up as easily with a regular brush as I'd hoped is going to make the tip part a little harder than what I'd planned. Because I want to grab some of this atmosphere, which does a purple shift. It's interesting because when it's up and I'm looking in the camera, it looks almost the same color as this, just a little lighter. But when I'm looking directly at it, I can see a pink to purple shift right there. And that's the one I want. So I don't know if this is going to work. We're going to try. If not, I'm going to have to pick out one of these uh, mats, which is fine. I have one in mind. So... I'm going to try a smaller, slightly stiffer brush and see if that helps. I'm going to also get it wet. I don't know how that's going to work for blending it out on the edges, but we'll, we'll see. And then we're just going to go in straight down and try to pick it up like this and see if we get any of it. It looks like it's trying to come up. taking some work though and we're going to put that in the corner and move it out okay again it is not as deep as if I was using a sponge tip but I am able to build her up And I'm bringing her down to kind of do that almost cut crease thing, getting it down in this corner. And I'm trying to buff it out up along the top here. I'm going to try to get it just a little bit darker in here. I 
lifting it out again. I like it. At least I like it from what I see. It is not as dark as I would normally do for up there, but that's fine. Let's do the clear skies. That's a really, really deep purple. Really deep purple. And I'm using my one of my triangular brushes. They pick right on the edges, right on all. And that's going along the edge of my crease. I'm going to go and I'm kind of needing that one third point where we brought the frost in and going back from there. I don't want to go too much further in than that. And then we're going to brush this out like that. Kind of wrap the outer lid in this color. I think a lot of that's going to get covered up. Oh, I like how that worked out. That purple was, I think, the best bet. Clear skies. And then very quickly, I'm going to find the brush. To buff, buff this upper area. This is what I usually do to help with the blend. Smooth out some of those upper edges, right? All right. I like that. That's very pretty. Okay, so I am going to go and do the other eye and the rest of my face. I'm going to go ahead and try on all these, these other products. Um... Well, I guess I could do them with you around. I normally go ahead and show you try, me trying on the new stuff. I was just going to skip all that. I'm going to try the blush. I'm going to go ahead and do the blush without you guys. But we'll do the mascara and the lip products together. How's that? All right. So be back in a few. All righty. So the blush. Be careful. If you buy one of these, be careful. It really went on dark. I had to... Um, Buff it out with one of my powder brushes. That's fine. Uh, it did ombre a little. I would say that it was it's lighter up the top. So if you're using it, you want to make sure to put the darker end on your brush. Use a bigger brush and put the darker end on the bottom and make sure to do that and then have the lighter end up top so you don't have this huge swoop of dark color. Um, impressed. If, if Moira's um, eyeshadows were this pigmented, I wouldn't have a problem. Anyway, so I did use that blue. I used three colors for the under my eye. I used this color Comfort along the inner corner. And then I used Chill on the middle section. And then I used this color Breathe on the outer side here. And then I grab some more of that uh, Wonderland for this inner corner. It's not gonna stay long. The inner corner stuff never stays long on my eyes, but that's what I did. <laughs> so uh, I did not put on my base coat. I always use the Essence Volume Booster Lash Primer as a base coat for my lashes. Always, always, always. And sometimes I use their um, what is this? Princess La Essence Lash Princess False Lash Effect uh, as a mixer with other mascaras. I find it gives a good additional base or works as a very good mixer for other mascaras. I'm trying to see what I am doing. Now, 
I have not opened this Moira mascara at all. So I don't even know. I don't even know what the brush looks like at this point. I do hope it's not plastic. see what I'm doing <laughs> I used a mix of blue and black for my eyeliner I was able to use this um, where is it where is you uh, this beauty for real gel liner along the lower lash line but it was not going to show up on the top lash line, so I went ahead and used my usual uh, Wet n' Wild Fantasy Maker face paint thing for the eyeliner for the rest of it. And I put a little bit of the Beauty For Real on the wings, just a little bit, probably not even enough to notice. All right, so here we go. Volume Long Last Mascara. I've never tried this. I've already marked it because we are opening it. All right, so first of all, it is not a plastic brush, which makes me very happy. I don't like plastic brushes. It's a standard brush. I use it by itself. It is covering really well. One way to tell if it covers well, use a primer. And in fact, it is covering very, very well because usually I have issues on this outer corner getting the primer covered up. And this is just doing a great job of covering up the primer. We're going to need more than one coat. Though I standardly need two or three for even my favorite mascaras, which honestly I don't buy much anymore. They're, um, the full sizes are too expensive and, um, I don't know, I guess technically this, the smaller ones are too expensive too, but, um, they've gone up in price too. So that's part of that. I am not seeing it actually great much. Yeah, I don't know about volume. I do see it giving me some length a little bit. Like I said, we are going to have to, did I get my cheek? I got my cheek, damn it. We're gonna have to use more than one coat. It is covering really well, like I said. I just don't see it quite doing much with the one coat, so. Let's try to get through these other coats. Okay, so this is with two coats. I can see it a bit better. Uh, it seems to be doing more lengthening. I will say that this is a somewhat dry formula. three coats I think I'm pretty pleased with it um, I do three coats for most of my mascaras and for a drugstore formula a drugstore priced formula I think that that's that's decent it's not one of the best ones I've had but it actually is it's it I'm not mad at it okay all right so very quickly I need to take my hair down before I start working with um, lipsticks because otherwise the hair gets into my face, my mouth. So I will be right back again. <laughs> All right, so if you're noticing a longer, slightly looser curl on the hair, like I said earlier, I was not planning to, I was thinking about, but I didn't think, I wasn't sure if I would be doing a um, video today. 
So I did not diffuse at all. Uh, this is my hair when I've, the only thing, two things I've used on it is my, um, Myel Mango and Tulsi leave-in conditioner and either the Mango and Tulsi gel or the Eden Body Works, um, Citrus Fusion, um, hair and body butter. Today I used the gel, which I think is, the curl is beautiful some places but it does come out more elongated because I didn't I didn't diffuse it so no you're not seeing things all right so let's go ahead and put on this darker shade of the Moira um, signature lipstick I like that. It applies nice and smooth. It feels really nice on the lips. You'll notice I didn't put on my usual um, ColourPop primer it's for two reasons. One, I have Jack Black's on already. So that's been sitting on my lips and it doesn't need to be any more slick. And two, these actually seem to apply in such a way that you don't really need a primer for them at all. So, all right. So now we're going to go ahead and get into the Nomad Gloss, which yes, I chose a purple to go over this beautiful red. Here we go. I have not tried any of the Nomads. There's our doe foot. It is just a gloss. I'm gonna have to read dip. All right, so it is a much thicker gloss than I'm used to. I am seeing some um, of the purple. It has enough of the color that I'm happy with that, that it can color adjust just a little bit without completely changing the color on the lip. I'm gonna go ahead and line. This is with um, uh, Len Bunny. This is the ex one of the extra liners they sent to me. Okay, so I am gonna go ahead and get my tea started because as you know, we always do our tea towards the end of these things and then we'll do our opening and then we'll come back and talk about all the things. Although I, you know, I've given you some discussion along the way. We'll talk about it a little bit more in just a few. Alrighty, so here is our final look. I might be falling apart a very tiny bit on this corner. It, it's not horrible. But I did notice it when I was taking pictures. So anyway, let's go ahead and get in here. Hopefully you can see that beautiful duo slash multi-chrome doing its thing with the pink, a little bit of gold and the blue. And I swear to God, when I look at it in the pan, I see a touch of green. So um, I'm, I'm actually very happy with this look despite the fact that the hair is just like all over the place. Let us go ahead and talk about the other things first because I have discussed them a bit as we were using them. I'm quite impressed with the Moira blush. As I noted, you're gonna wanna use a careful hand with it, make sure the darker end, use a fluffier brush. Uh, I believe I use this brush. So use a fluffier brush and make sure that the dark end 
when you put it on, it stays the same on both sides. So if you put it on here, you want to do it there and then you want to make sure not to switch it around too much because the dark, this is highly pigmented and that dark end will take over. It did seem to take over a little bit on my face. So I had to, um, use another, uh, a big powder brush to kind of tone it down some. So that's the only warning. It's a beautiful blush. I'm going to, I'm going to hate watching this beautiful, I don't know if you guys can see it, this beautiful um, embossing going away. It's It's got a butterfly and a row and roses and a beautiful outer end. It's very similar to what they did to that uh, supposedly, um, um, that powder that's supposed to be uh, water resistant. So it was very similar to that. It's very pretty. Very nice blush, highly recommend. Um, even though I didn't like the last color of the signature lipstick, I did like the formula. This one is definitely much better. It's from, uh, it's not amongst, this is not one of the newer shades. This is one of the older shades that they had. They have a nice wide shade range for everybody. That's great, so highly recommend that. Um, and Moira is really affordable. Uh, the mascara won't be a favorite, but it is not horrible. It is usable. Uh, the reason it won't be a favorite, I think it's a little too dry. It does give me what I want, but I can see this drying up very, very quickly when I'm using it because as you use mascaras, they dry out. So I like a slight, I don't like a wet, wet formula, but I do like a slightly wetter formula than what this is because that gives them a bit more longevity. However, that said, three coats, standard for everything else that I've ever used, and I still got long lashes, and it did finally, you do finally get the volume, the filling out of your lashes as well when you do two or three coats. So it's not a bad mascara. It's great for the price. Just don't think it'll be a favorite. Um, however, you're looking at prices, you know, and you're going to buy from Moira anyway. You may want to give that a try. Not horrible. So the Nomad Lip Gloss, this kind of let me down just a little bit. It is really, really thin. Thick. It doesn't seem very, very glossy. It gives a little bit of a shine, but the lipstick I used already had a bit of a shine to it. So I cannot say how much of the shine is from this and how much is from the lipstick. It did have, one of the things I do like, it did have enough color to give me just a touch of an adjustment and add just a bit of that lavender in there. However, th this formula, I think, also needs to be, this is a stickier gloss, so I would want it to be less sticky, and I guess because I actually think I prefer more glosses that are more like oils, uh, I would like this to be more like an oil. Not mad at it, but it's probably not something I would repurchase if, if they keep it on the website. I would really like to see um, a looser less sticky gloss. I'm, it's okay. And now the palette, as you probably can figure out, I love it. This palette is so totally me with these colors. It really is. I'm into the purples. I'm into the greens, the blues. I, I'm into all that. I, I, those are the colors I really, really love to work with the most. Uh, I do work with other colors, but these, this is, this is the palette I prefer to work with. And it has nice light shades that I can use under my brow. It has some beautiful deep shades to go into the crease and uh, deepen the crease out. And it's a nice mix of mattes and shimmers. And it has a couple of nice surprising um shades that that are duo or multi-chrome in it. I'm not sure how many are supposed to be multi-chrome, but I know we've got at least um, one that seems to do that to me because I see a green and a pink and kind of a gold in there when I'm looking at it. So it's a beautiful, I, I really like this palette. I will say the one thing Nomad is my number one favorite out of my top five. So I will say the one thing that I, um, that does knock this down a little bit for me is the fact that um, the shimmers are not brush friendly. With Nomad, they are brush friendly and, uh, but they aren't 
for most brands, they aren't brush friendly. So that doesn't really take anything away from this. It just makes it um, not quite as usable for me in terms of being able to use brushes to apply what I want to apply uh, as the Nomad palettes. That's it. So that just puts it a little bit behind. So Nomad's number one, this is number two. And, um, but I love it. I love this. I love this. It's about 37, 35, dollars on the site. You will have to pay about 13 for shipping, I believe, if you're in the US because they are an overseas or UK brand. I think it's worth it. We spend about 45 or whatever on Nomad palettes, which I love, like I said, and they're in the US. So I'm spending about the same. They do seem to arrive very quickly. However, it is a smaller brand. It is a uh, smaller indie brand. So um, a lot of the palettes that they have go out of stock very quickly. This is not, according to what they've said in the past, this is not a limited edition palette. So if it is out of stock, just sign up to be notified. I haven't found that those always work. So you'll want to keep an eye on their Instagram. They always let people know about restocks. Keep an eye and go to the website every now and then. If they do mention a restock on the Instagram, you want to be right there because their stuff sells out very quickly for very good reason, as far as I'm concerned. Um, but great brand. This is a beautiful palette. I love the look. And uh, yeah, so to highly recommend. It's, it's, they're one of those, they're one of those brands that make it very clear that even though duochromes and multichromes can be much more expensive to make, that they have found ways to make them so that they are affordable for most of us. Uh, they're not like Ensley Rains where a palette with a number of duo or multichromes will end up being $120. So, and they usually end up with more shades than Ensley Rain palettes too, and uh, even more shades than the Nomad palettes, which, you know, rock on. <laughs> I love it. This is about my limit on shades in a palette. We got 20 in here. So uh, yeah, somewhere between 15 and 20 is uh, right about my comfort point for most palettes. Get more than 20 and I feel too overwhelmed. Uh, there are a few shades in here that do feel, well, I can't really say that, I guess. I was going to say that do feel like they're almost dupes. They're not really. But when you look, when I look directly in here at this, this just seems to be a shinier version of that when I'm looking at my camera. So there's a couple of shades that seem to be not quite dupes, but close enough that they probably could have done something else with it, but I'm glad they didn't. This is one of those color stories where I think they did a really good job. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, it is quite possible that they could have thrown in something else along the ice white or silver side, I guess. But beyond that, it's a beautiful palette. It's a beautiful palette. Love it. So I'm going to give that four and a half out of five. And that's only because of the shimmers. You can't really use a brush to deal with them too well. And, you know, another silver instead of something that was close. I don't know. We could have gotten rid of the black that's in here. Um, replaced it with a silver. And I think then that would have been perfect. 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 It's a beautiful palette, though. Highly recommend if you're interested. Anyway, so that is it for the day with our try-on. You'll have to let me know down below if you are interested in picking up this absolutely gorgeous palette. And in the meantime, that's it. We're going to go ahead and have a sip of our tea. And then we are going to get on out of here. I have a boy to feed. I have a chapter to record. I have another video to get ready for. We've got things to do. I'm sure you've got things to do. Let's sip our tea, which has been in there for a good 10 minutes. What does the bag say? The bag says five to 10. So it's been at least 10 minutes, probably closer to, you know, 12 minutes. So it should be uh, right there. And it's low caffeine. Let's give a sip and move on out of here.
The chocolate's definitely getting stronger. Now it's less like a brownie and more like hot cocoa. I don't mind. It's a beautiful tea. I'm interested to see what it's going to do when I do my reading in a little bit. Which I have to do after I feed my boy. Anyway, that is it. Love my daughters. Love you, my dragonettes. And hope you have a good one.